Story. It's what drives every quest, character, and campaign at our tables. It's what keeps us coming back to our favorite books and shows. But how often do we actually stop to consider the themes of those stories? What is it that the characters are actually after when they set out for adventure? Is there an end goal or finale that the Odyssey is inevitably heading toward? Or are the characters simply meandering about until something happens to them? Today, I, Jordan, Goblin of Goblins, set out to answer the question, how do we create themes in our campaigns? Welcome to another segment of When the Dice Settle. I have scoured to the heart of the archives deep And traveled to the top of the cinder cloud peaks And forded the ever plains for the answers I seek So beware of the realms where you meddle For the fates can be fickle when the dice settle Before I dive in, let's just get this out of the way. I'm not here to talk about how you can railroad your players into living out your personal novel and rob them of any choice or agency at the table. No, instead I want to discuss the different kinds of stories that your game can draw inspiration from using something Orson Scott Card calls the Mice Quotient. This is a term I picked up when I was working on my own fantasy novel a while back, and I thought, I wonder how the Mice Quotient could shape the quests we create for our characters and worlds. Okay, so first off, what the heck is the Mice Quotient anyway? Orson Scott Card, the Ender's Game guy, describes this as the different themes within a story that the characters experience. Mice is an acronym for the four major themes, though I am bending them a little to better suit role-playing games. The themes are milieu, inquiry, character, and event. So let's start with the first, milieu. Milieu is just a fancy French word meaning setting or environment. Now this can be a physical place or even a social environment. Think Hunger Games in the capital. A milieu story concerns the world that surrounds the characters. Or for another example, at its simplest terms, this could be a dungeon crawl where the party enters a location and their goal is to escape or work their way through. The conflict in a milieu is the struggle to escape, and the resolution means leaving the world or dungeon. Or maybe it's just to get something from this strange new place and return with the objective in tow. You know, a MacGuffin. Think about Bilbo in The Hobbit. He journeys into the Lonely Mountain and retrieves the Arkenstone, bringing it to Bard as a bargaining chip, or the Fellowship in The Lord of the Rings. They are forced to journey through Moria to get to the other side. No one wanted to go to those places, but what they needed was either inside or just on the other side of it. A milieu concludes when the characters or party escape the place that they are in. Now, let's take a look at inquiry, or as it's often referred to, idea. An inquiry is a quest for information. There's something the party needs to uncover or discover, and the only way to find it is by doing some digging. The focus in this adventure is on exploration or solving the pieces to a puzzle. There are generally unanswered questions, questions that need answering. Sometimes those answers lead to even bigger questions or reveal new quests that must be undertaken. For example, in the name of the wind, Kvoth hunts for answers about the Chandrian, a mysterious group of powerful beings who seem to be more myth than men. He goes to extreme lengths to uncover any clues about them, but each answer often leads to more questions. And because for Kvoth, the stakes are so high, he will go to any lengths to find those answers. However, Unlike the King Killer Chronicles, an inquiry is finished whenever the characters find satisfying answers to the questions or obstacles they were hunting in the first place. Sorry, Rothfuss. Love you, dude. This is an inquiry quest. 
character. Now, character is a tricky one for an RPG campaign. This might be more of a side quest where your player characters and their pasts are the subject of the adventure. Some groups love to dig into their party's motives, who they are, and why they do what they do. Others may find this style tedious. It's best to ask the players if they're interested in character story quests before diving headlong into one of these. I'm reminded of live play games like Critical Role, where the characters take center stage of the story and their backgrounds are woven into a greater narrative. This can be tricky to do and takes a skilled GM and a player willing to collaborate. But if pulled off, a character arc can provide a powerful tie-in and motivation to the greater quest. Although, be warned, if you're playing a game where the life expectancy of the characters is lower, you may want to avoid this type of theme. One great example of a character quest is Luke in Star Wars. His adventure actually begins as an event when he gets a distressed message from Princess Leia, but once he's thrown headlong into the action, he discovers that the Dark Lord himself, Darth Vader, is actually his father. Luke's quest then shifts from event to character as he begins to struggle with where he fits into all of this. He questions whether he should even be a part of his party and has to make some hard choices between trying to rescue his father and protecting his friends. Eventually, fate brings them all together and he chooses to try and persuade his father, claiming that there is still good in him, even at the risk of his own life. Luke's quest doesn't end when the Empire is defeated, but rather when Anakin chooses to save his son, becoming the man he was always meant to be. That is a character journey. Events Now, events are probably the most common story types in games like D&D. An event is something that happens and interrupts the status quo. This could be a zombie apocalypse, Harry Potter receiving his letter from Hogwarts, Dantes being framed for a crime he did not commit. Events can be major catastrophes that change the world or simply change the world for the party. The main idea is that in order for things to be set right, order must be restored. These are a lot of your action movies. Think about how many Marvel movies take place because something explodes or because a bad guy shows up and starts wreaking havoc on everything. That is what we call an event. By now you may be thinking, Okay, Jordan, this is a lot of highbrow stuff, but what's the big takeaway here? The big takeaway for you game masters is that in order for a theme to be executed in a satisfying way, it also needs to conclude in a satisfying way. Let's quickly review the four types of adventures. But before we go, I want to remind everyone that liking and subscribing is 100% free and it ensures I can make more videos like this in the future. So please do before June eats her way out of this cage and gets a hold of all my dice. In a milieu, start with the party entering a strange new world, then end that adventure when the party leaves that strange place. These can look like travel logs, utopian fiction, sci-fi worlds, and westerns, or just good old plain dungeon crawls. Inquiry quests. These start when your party meets an obstacle. They have a problem that must be solved. This gives rise to questions. How will they get around the obstacle? An inquiry ends when the party has answered the questions or removed the obstacle. These often look like locked room mysteries, bank heist stories, and so on. Character stories. These often start with a character who is dissatisfied with who they are or their past, and they decide to do something intentional about it. Now this one can end when that character either finds new purpose, becomes content with who they are, or it can even result in despair, which may generate a new personal quest. Oftentimes these look like romances, buddy cop films, and simple self-examination. Events these start when your party decides to restore order to the world, and they end with either the success or failure of that goal. There are lots of ways that these can manifest, and they usually look like cataclysms, apocalypse, revenge, social revolution, the list goes on. So in summary, I hope this helps make sense of the connecting threads in our adventures, and how to create strong themes throughout a campaign. Remember, the conclusion to a quest or adventure is often as important as the start. 
If you want your players to feel they accomplished something within the world by the end of it, consider what the satisfying conclusion to that quest might be. However, your players will always surprise you. If they're out for revenge and find a way to get it early, don't drag it out. Let it happen. Also, if that revenge turns into a love story, you can let that happen too. That can be as equally satisfying of a conclusion. I can't count the number of times that me or my players have lost the thread to an adventure because we've all forgotten what set us off on that quest in the first place. So take notes and try to find ways to remind the party of what they're really after. And if something happens that changes that goal, pivot with them. Like Luke's quest changing from an event to a character quest, it happens, even in the best stories. Well, that's the mice quotient, and that wraps things up for today. So remember, Goblin Gang, make mistakes, choose chaos, and most importantly, have fun. I have scoured to the heart of the archives deep and traveled to the top of the cinder cloud peaks and forded the ever plains for the answers I seek so beware of the realms where you meddle for the fates can be fickle when the dice settles